The idyllic Suffolk village of Polstead seems an unlikely place for a crime of passion. But in 1828, William Corder became the village's most infamous resident. He was hanged for a crime which shocked the country. William Corder was the only surviving son of a tenant farmer. He had to marry to ensure the family's future. Tragedy had already struck the Corder family. William's brother Thomas died trying to cross the frozen village pond. His father and two other brothers died soon after. This is the death mask of William Corder, taken from a plaster cast shortly after he was hanged. The story of the Red Barn murder and its grisly relics can be found in a small museum in Bury St Edmunds, Suffolk. Chris Mycock is the curator. I think he liked a good life. He often disappeared down to London. And there's a bit of a spendthrift. He mixed with, shall we say, the low life. And one of them was heard to say of William that uh, he would hang one of these days. Stuart Evans is an authority on famous murders. He wasn't a particularly good catch from, from the looks angle because he was snub-nosed, short-sighted, not very tall, and uh, one would hardly describe him as, as extremely attractive. William Corder was a tenant farmer in Polstead. The Red Barn was situated on his farmland, and he formed an association with the, the girl Mariah Martin, who was actually about five years older than him. Mariah lived with her father and stepmother in this cottage less than a mile from William Corder's farm. Well, Maria Martin was very much a local girl, a polstered girl. She lived with her mother and father in the village, in the cottage which you can still see today. They were quite a poor family. He was merely a farm labourer, a mole catcher. She could write, she could read, which for a village girl of low status, was probably quite an achievement. When she got to about 16 or 17, she went off the rails a little bit. She started having affairs. She was quite attractive. I suppose for her day, she was fairly promiscuous. Uh, she had three illegitimate um, babies. Mariah had a child by William's brother, which died. Another by the local squire. The workhouse was the usual fate of an unmarried mother, but Squire Matthews saved Mariah from the workhouse by sending her a five pound note every quarter. Mr. Matthews didn't marry, marry her either. So then she turned to another most likely catch, William. And they had, shall we say, a relationship for about 18 months. Mariah became pregnant again, this time by William, but the child didn't survive. Mariah's family were determined that William should marry Mariah and provide for her. So it wasn't really a desirable state of affairs, but uh, it seems as though she weathered these three, three, three pregnancies and uh, didn't really uh, come unstuck until she met William Corder. William's reputation for dishonesty was well known. He stole one of Mariah's five pound notes by opening her post. At the time, he could have been hanged for that, had Mariah ever told anyone something she never let him forget. It just shows how dishonest Corder could be. The Martin family pressed Corder to marry the girl. They still wanted him to marry her. Corder said that he would marry the girl and stand by her. And to that end, they arranged to meet in the Red Barn and go off to Ipswich and get married. Or at least that was the story that, that Corder gave. He didn't really want to marry her. But in the end, she pressed him. He agreed said, come to the Red Barn. You have to dress as a man so people don't know that we're going off together. We'll go to Ipswich. We'll get a special license and I'll marry you. She was never seen alive again. 